Welcome everybody to uh, lesson two in our new course, BTB 126, the Old Testament Books of History, part one. And in this course, we're looking at Joshua, Judges, Ruth, First and Second Samuel, First and Second Kings. So this is part one, and it's all about occupying the land and distributing the land. This is an exciting time in Israel's history and for me as a Bible student it's an exciting time for me just to see how they went about this and how they went about occupying the land and it's all about walking by faith and a lot of people don't read the Old Testament but the Old Testament can teach us a lot about God and how to worship God and how to obey him and we have this whole history before us about God's people uh, and, and the results of walking by faith. And then we see the flip side, the results of walking in disobedience. And so I pray that uh, you will not only be a student of the Old Testament, but a student of the New Testament also, but encourage others to be Bible students. Jesus said, <coughs> man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. And so we're excited about this course tonight, uh, lesson two in our 12-week course. And for those of you who are um, watching by way of the recording, we thank God for you. We also thank God for those who are online live with us. And all of our um, lessons are recorded and saved on our website. Also, they're on our YouTube channel, and we keep them archived so that if anyone wants a copy of any lesson, we can send out the archive. And so this is a, a wonderful journey we're on going through the Bible. And tell your friends, tell your neighbors, tell your family, these classes are free. But if anyone wants to take the classes for credit, we would gladly accommodate them in the back to basic school of ministry. A lot of people are earning their degrees, and you know the degree that you earn in the back to basic school of ministry <coughs> should be second to no, nobody else, no other degree, because uh, all of our students work hard and study and do their homework, and I'm really excited about the work you're doing and the achievements you're making. So we give God the praise. Hey, let's get ready to look at Joshua chapters 12, 13 through 24, and uh, let's start with prayer. Father God, we thank you, we bless you, we praise you, and we honor you as we venture tonight into looking at Joshua chapters 13 through 24. We thank you that your word uh, has been given to us by you so that your word is a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path. Father, as we study your word together tonight, we ask that you draw us even closer to you. And uh, we thank you that you indwell your people, that you live in the church, <clears throat> that you tabernacle with people. We thank you for your love for us. We thank you for your Holy Spirit. We thank you for our Savior and Lord Jesus Christ. And then, Father, we thank you for the gift of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of you. And so open up the scriptures to us, Lord God. Reveal your word to us and help us to grow strong in the Lord and in the power of your might. We pray for every listener, whether they are live or uh, by recording, listening by recording. We pray healing in every household. We pray for warm weather where it's cold and, and cool weather where it's warm. We just thank you, Father. We just bless you. And, Lord, draw us all closer to you, and we thank you. Rebuke the devourer, Lord God. We, we give you our attention, Lord, and we thank you and love you and honor you. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, uh, we're going to get ready to start with chapter 13. Does anybody have any questions before we venture into Joshua chapter 13.
Well, if not, okay. And we're going to just start off with uh, reading some of the scripture. Now Joshua was old and stricken in years. And the Lord said unto him, Thou art old and stricken in years, and there remaineth yet very much land to be possessed. You know, I like this. I like this. God told him, hey, you're old, you're stricken in years, but there's still work to be done. You know, personally, that's a personal message. I take that personal from God. I mean, <laughs> God said, you're getting older, and but there is still much work to be done. And I want to encourage each of you, each of you on board tonight, you're younger than me, but don't ever think that uh, uh, you're too old to serve the Lord. God continues. He continues, and he's amazing Jackie and me right now, even at this moment. He's amazing us at how he's opening new doors for this ministry. And so God told Joshua, you're old and stricken in years, and there remaineth yet very much land to be possessed. This is the land that yet remains. All the borders of the Philistines, even all Geshuri. I'm going to read a lot of this so that uh, just to let you know that you don't have to stumble over these names and these words. Just get into the flow and, 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 and flow with each syllable. From Sihur, which is before Egypt, even into the borders of Ekron northward, which is counted to the Canaanite, five lords of the Philistines, the Gazathites, and the Ashdathites, and Eshkalonites, the Gittites, and the Ekronites, also the Avites. A lot of Vites and Ites in there. From the south, all the land of the Canaanites, and Merah, that is beside the Sidonians, unto Aphek, to the borders of the Amorites, and the land of the Giblites, and all Lebanon, toward the sun rising, from Baal Gad, under Mount Hermon, unto the entering into Hamath, all the inhabitants of the hill country, from Lebanon, unto Misrephoth Maim, Misrephoth Maim, just flow into, these, into this with one syllable at, the, at a time. Verse 6, Misrephoth Maim, and all the Sidonians, them will I drive out from before the children of Israel, only divide thou it by lot unto the Israelites for an inheritance, as I have commanded thee. <clears throat> now therefore, divide this land for an inheritance unto the nine tribes and the half-tribe of Manasseh. We see in this 13th chapter that God is telling Joshua there's still much land to be distributed. Now divide this land. That is part of Joshua's responsibility, to divide that land among the tribes. And one uh, uh, thing about the half-tribe of Manasseh and the other half-tribe of Ephraim, when you look at the 12 tribes of Israel, the tribe Joseph does not have a tribe named after him, but Joseph's sons, Manasseh and Ephraim, or Ephraim, uh, split a tribe. Half of what would, be, what would have been called the tribe of Joseph was Manasseh, and the other half was Ephraim. Verse 8, With whom the Reubenites and the Gadites have received their inheritance, which Moses gave them beyond Jordan eastward, even as Moses, the servant of the Lord, gave them. So you see in the distribution of land, the Gadites, the tribe of Gad, and the tribe of Reuben, and the tribe of Manasseh, all received their land on the east side of the Jordan. They claimed that land. They loved that land. They loved, said it was good for the cattle. And so they decided they would settle on the east side of the Jordan. But Moses told them, you will have to cross over Jordan with us, and your armies would lead forth Israel into battle. And then after you help Israel, the rest of Israel, to settle their land, then you can return to uh, your, your land that you've claimed and build your houses for your families and settle and settle your families. Verse 9, from Aroer, that is upon the bank of the river Arnon, and the city that is in the midst of the river, and all the plain of Mediba unto Dibon, and all the cities of Zion, king of the Amorites, which reigned in Heshbon, 
unto the border of the children of Ammon and Gilead and the border of the Geshurites and Mech Maachathites and all Mount Hermon and all Bashan unto Salca, all the kingdom of Og and Bashan, which reigned in Ashtaroth and Etrei, who remain of the remnant of the giants, for these did Moses smite and cast them out. You say, well, Pastor Carter, why are you reading all this stuff to us, all these names? Well, it's good to know these names because today there are people in the Mideast who contest Israel's right to the land that they own. And a lot of nations are living on property that now belongs to Israel and that God gave up to Israel. And so there are uh, nations that hate Israel, want to wipe Israel also off the face of the earth, but God gave this land to Israel. And Israel is the rightful owner of the land, even though Israel may not be occupying all of that land at the present day. And so we can uh, skip down to verse 21. And all the cities of the plain and all the kingdom of Zion, king of the Amorites, which reigned in Heshbon, whom Moses smote with the princes of Midian, Evi, and Rakim, and Zur, and Hur, and Reba, which were dukes of Zion dwelling in the country. Balaam also, the son of Beor, the soothsayer, did the children of Israel slay with the sword among them that were slain by him. You remember Balaam, the prophet who uh, went out to prophesy for Balak, to prophesy against Israel because King Balak was going to pay him some money and God warned Balaam, don't prophesy against Israel. Well, it was during the occupation of, of the land that Balaam was put to death in a war against Israel. And so, um, verse 28, this is the inheritance of the children of God, of Gad, after their families, the cities, and their villages. And Moses gave inheritance unto the half-tribe of Manasseh, and this was the possession of the half-tribe of the children of Manasseh by their families. And their coast was from Mahanaim, all Bashan, all the kingdom of Og, king of Bashan. Remember, Og was a big giant. His, his bed was about 13 feet long and 8 feet wide. So uh, Moses had gone to war against Og, the king of Bashan, and slaughtered him. Verse 31, and half Gilead and Ashtaroth and Edrei, cities of the kingdom of Og and Bashan, were pertaining unto the children of Machir, the son of Manasseh, even to the one half of the children of Machir by their families. These are the countries which Moses did distribute for inheritance in the plains of Moab, Moab on the other side Jordan by Jericho eastward. So uh, uh, God is reminding Joshua to remind the people, these are the countries that I've given to Israel on the other side of Jordan before you cross the Jordan. So ladies and gentlemen, when you read this Old Testament, these books of history, you see the, the, uh, the wide area of land and, and countries that God gave to Israel. God gave this land to his people, and, and, and this land still belongs to Israel, ladies and gentlemen. It still belongs to Israel. Verse 33 of uh, chapter 13, But unto the tribe of Levi Moses gave not any inheritance. The Lord God of Israel was their inheritance, as he said unto them. So the Levites were the tribe that did not receive any inheritance. They did not uh, receive any land to own by themselves. They were given certain cities, which became cities of refuge. And the Levites' inheritance was uh, to minister in the temple, in the tabernacle, later in the temple, and they received tithes from the tithes of the people uh, who came to the um, tabernacle and later the temple. So tonight, we're looking at chapter 13, the division of the land, and Reuben's allotment, chapter 14, Manasseh's allotment, and Caleb's inheritance, 
chapter 15, Israel's borders, Judah's inheritance, chapter 16, Manasseh and Ephraim, chapter 17, Manasseh's inheritance. When we go over to chapter 18, we're looking at claiming the land. Okay, God gave it to them, then they had to go and claim it and occupy. Chapter 19, Simeon, Simeon's inheritance, Issachar's inheritance. You say, well, who was Issachar? Issachar was one of Jacob's sons. He was one of the 12 tribes. Naphtali's inheritance, chapter 20, cities of refuge. We're going to learn about cities of refuge and why they existed. Chapter 21, cities for the priest. Chapter 22, Joshua's blessing and uh, an altar in Canaan, a witness between us. In chapter 22, there was almost a, a war to break out among the Israelites because of misunderstanding. Three of the tribes, Gad and Ephraim, Gad and Reuben and Manasseh, as they went back over Jordan to occupy their lands and to be with their families, they built an altar on the other side of Jordan. The misunderstanding was that the other uh, Jews, the nine and a half tribes, thought that they were trying to build their own separate altar to have their own worship. And so um, Joshua sent Phinehas, Phinehas, the grandson of Aaron, Phineas, he was he's a he was a bad brother. He sent Phineas to look into that situation and Phineas took a large army with them and they straightened that situation out and um Gad and Manasseh and Ephraim let them know that no, we're not trying to break away from uh, the worship that God gave to Moses. We are just building this altar as a reminder. It's only a reminder uh to our people of how the Lord brought us through and gave us this land. So they resolved that issue and prevented a civil war. Chapter 23, the people assemble. We find that as we close out the book of Joshua, the people assemble. Joshua called all the people together. Then in chapter 24, you might want to get your tissues out, set your box of Kleenex on the side, because we're looking at Joshua's farewell address and as God's acts are reviewed, and then we look at the death of Joshua, and uh, we look at the memorial to Joseph. So this is a great and powerful and mighty book. A lot of names, a lot of different places, a lot of kingdoms. Uh, but as you study it, um, look at it as proof that God had given that land to Israel and that Israel today has claim on all these territories. Now, I can't identify all these territories on the map today, but I'm quite sure that some people in Israel are scholarly enough to do so. But God gave specific regions to Israel, and that land today, despite the disputes by other nations, uh, despite the hatred, of other nations for the Jews, this land belongs to God's people. I love chapter 14 of Joshua. It is one of my favorite uh, chapters in the entire Bible because it highlights uh, how God used a certain man named Caleb. I mean, Caleb was an old man. He was 85 years old, ladies and gentlemen, and God used him mightily. Let's look into chapter 14. And these are the countries which the children of Israel inherited in the land of Canaan, which Eleazar the priest, and Joshua the son of Nun, and the heads of the fathers of the tribes of the children of Israel distributed for inheritance to them. By lot was their inheritance, as the Lord commanded by the hand of Moses for the nine tribes and for the half tribe. One of your homework assignments had to do with the importance of uh, making decisions by lot and uh, by, you may say, well, that's by chance. No, God honored the lots um, as, as um, Joshua selected uh, by lot the places that the tribes would, would um, inha inherit. 
For Moses had given the inheritance of two tribes and a half tribe on the other side, Jordan, but unto the Levites he gave none inheritance among them. For the children of Joseph were two tribes, Manasseh and Ephraim. Therefore they gave no part unto the Levites in the land, save cities to dwell in, and their suburbs for their cattle and for their substance. As the Lord commanded Moses, so the children of Israel did, and they divided the land. Starting with check six, starting with verse 6. Then the children of Judah came unto Joshua in Gilgal, and Caleb the son of Jephunneh, the Kenizzite, said unto him, Thou knowest the thing that the Lord said unto Moses, the man of God, concerning me and thee in Kadesh Barnea. Ladies and gentlemen, it was at Kadesh Barnea, only 11 days' march from the promised land. They were 11 days away from marching into the promised land when Moses sent out spies, 12 spies. Two of those spies were Caleb and Joshua to spy out the land and to bring a report about the land that God had given, given to them. And uh, so Caleb comes to Joshua when Joshua is distributing the land and said, you remember uh, when we went out to spy the land? Forty years old was I when Moses, the servant of the Lord, sent me from Kadesh Barnea to spy out the land. And I brought him word again as it was in mine heart. Nevertheless, my brethren that went up with me made the heart of the people melt, but I, I wholly followed the Lord my God. So Caleb is saying, I was 40 years old then, and that was 45 years prior, ladies and gentlemen. Caleb was 40 years old, and he brought back a good report along with the report of Joshua about the goodness of the land and how they should just go on in and occupy the land. Nevertheless, he said, my brethren that went up with me made the heart of the people melt, but I wholly followed the Lord my God. And they were outvoted. When they got back to give their report, ten of the spies told Moses and the people, we can't take this land. We were like grasshoppers. We we're like grasshoppers in their sight. They are giants. They are giants in that land, and, and they have walled cities, and it's impossible. And then the ten other spies said, we should have stayed in Egypt. And ladies and gentlemen, the people believed those ten spies. They did not believe Joshua. They did not believe uh, Caleb. And, and, and that's a lesson in, for us. Ladies and gentlemen, believe the word of God. Don't believe the majority. That's why I have problems at times with church votes. We're going to vote in a pastor. We're going to elect a new pastor. We're going to vote a bishop. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, it pays to seek the Lord and to pray and seek his face. Turn down your plate, fast and pray. If you need a pastor, turn down your plate, church, and fast and pray and ask God to send you a pastor. Uh, many Many times people make uh, the big mistake in the church of voting and majority rule. The church is not a democracy, ladies and gentlemen. The church is to be led by the Holy Spirit. We ought to seek the Lord, not, not the, the democratic view of our fellow uh, co-church persons or worshipers because everybody in the church is not saved. I'm going to repeat that. Everybody in the church is not saved. Everybody who's, who is on the church roll does not know Jesus Christ, and everybody in the church does not know the word of God because we know that we know that we know that we know that most church people do not read their Bible. They, know, they do not study. And so Caleb uh, was led by the, the Lord, and Joshua was led by the Lord, but they were outvoted when they brought their report, their spying report. And as a result, Israel had to suffer. They had to, God uh, punished them. They had to wander through the wilderness for 40 years until that entire generation died in the wilderness. And, and whereas they could have gone right into the promised land in 11 days. And that's, that should be a message to each of us. When God makes a promise to you, 
walk by faith and not by sight. Don't worry about how difficult the, the task may seem, and, and don't worry about what other people think. For example, if God has called you to ministry, or God, or God has opened up a new door for you, and, and, and if you tell certain friends or certain members of the church, many are going to be negative. They've got their opinions. They've got their views. But stick with the opinion of the Lord. Be obedient to the Holy Spirit. Fast and pray. Fast and pray. Troubles will come against you, and people will have their own opinions. But you fast and pray and hold on. I say hold on to the promises of God. Verse 9, And Moses swore on that day, saying, Surely, the land whereon thy feet are trodden shall be thine inheritance and thy children's forever. Wherever your feet touch, God told Moses, that's your land and your children's land forever. Ladies and gentlemen, look how God blessed Israel. Wherever your feet touch the ground, that's going to be uh, your children's land forever. And now uh, Caleb is saying, verse 10, And now behold, listen to this, The Lord hath kept me alive, as he said, these forty and five years, even since the Lord spake this word unto Moses, while the children of Israel wandered in the wilderness. And now, lo, I am this day fourscore and five years old. I'm eighty-five years old. Caleb says, verse 11, as yet I am as strong this day as I was in the day that Moses sent me. As my strength was then, even so is my strength now for war, both to go out and to come in. Whoa. I said, whoa. Caleb, Caleb said, I'm just as strong today as I was 45 years ago. I'm just as strong as I was to go to war then, and, and I'm strong enough now to go. Now, therefore, listen to this. Listen to this. This is love. This is love, ladies and gentlemen. This is love. He's got a love for posterity, a love for future generations. Uh, he's not selfish. This is love for his people. He says, now, therefore, give me this mountain whereof the Lord spake in that day. For thou heardest in that day how the Anakims were there, and that the cities were great and fenced. If so be the Lord will be with me, then I shall be able to drive them out as the Lord said. Ladies and gentlemen, Caleb is saying to Joshua, 45 years ago, I saw the giants in this mountain, this place right here, Hebron. I saw the giants. Yes, they are giants. They are powerful and but if you give me this mountain perhaps I can drive them out I mean here's an 85 year old man saying hey I ain't retiring I ain't taking my shoes off I ain't I ain't I ain't gonna uh, uh, start eating oatmeal every day and 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 I ain't gonna watch TV every day and just vegetate my people my children my grandchildren my great grandchildren the future generations need a land that is free from the honor kings the giants still control this land and he said Joshua give me this mountain Mm, mm, mm. Boy, if I was preaching tonight, I'd preach. That would be my sermon. Give me this mountain. He said, He said, perhaps I can drive them out. And Joshua blessed him, verse 13, and gave unto Caleb, the son of Jephunneh, Hebron, for an inheritance. Hebron therefore became the inheritance of Caleb, the son of Jephunneh, the Kenizzite, unto this day. And whenever you see unto this day in the scripture, it doesn't mean until 2020. It doesn't mean uh, until 2020. It means until the day of the writing, the day that Joshua wrote this, or the day that uh, 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 his successor completed writing this book. Okay. Uh, and the name of Hebron before was Kerjath Arba, which Arba was a great man among the Anakims, and the land had rest from war. So we're going to pick up later on in the next chapter 
uh, what happened. You know, Caleb just didn't talk the talk. I mean, Caleb wasn't like, like, like a lot of folks we know. Caleb did not just talk the talk, Dustina. He walked the walk, okay? He said, give me this mountain. There are giants there. The giants are still entrenched. And um, if, if we're going to live safe, if our children are going to live safe into the next generation and generations to come, we've got to get rid of these giants. So chapter 15. Isn't this exciting, ladies and gentlemen? Praise God, this is exciting. This then was the lot of the tribe of the children of Judah by their families, even to the border of Edom. Edom, the wilderness of Zin, southward, was the uttermost part of the south coast. Okay, and so it talks more about the borders and the land and the uh, portions of the land. And um, I'm going to skip down. Unto verse 13 of chapter 14. Listen to this. And unto Caleb, the son of Jephunneh, he gave a part among the children of Judah, according to the commandment of the Lord to Joshua, even the city of Arba, the father of Anak, which city was, is Hebron. Okay, Arba was the father of, uh, he was a giant, and the father of Anak, the leader of the giants. And Caleb drove thence the three sons of Anak, Shishai, and Ahiman, and Talmai, the children of Anak, and he went up thence to the inhabitants of Debir, and the name of Debir before it was Kerjah Sefer, verse 16, and Caleb said, He that smiteth Kerjah Sefer, and taketh it, to him will I give Aksa, my daughter, to wife. Caleb said, Whoever destroys the city of Kerjath Sefer, I'm going to give him my daughter Aksa to be his wife. And Othniel, you might want to underline Othniel, because Othniel becomes uh, one of the early judges of Israel. Our next book will be studying the book of Judges. Othniel will judge Israel for a number of years. It is this Othniel who was... Uh, Caleb's uh, nephew. He was the son of Caleb's youngest brother. Uh, Othniel, the son of Kenaz, the brother of Caleb, took it and he gave him Aksa, his daughter, to wife. And it came to pass, as she came unto him, that she moved him to ask of her father a field. And she lighted off her ass, and Caleb said unto her, What wouldest thou? What do you want? <clears throat> and who answered? She said, Give me a blessing. For thou hast given me a south land, give me also springs of water. And he gave her the upper springs and the nether springs. This is the inheritance of the tribe of the children of Judah according to their families. And so we find that Caleb didn't just talk the talk in chapter 14 as it's recorded. Caleb said, give me this mountain. Forty-five years ago, I noticed when we spied out this land. The Anakims are there. The place is filthy with giants. They're bad. They're, they're, they're mean. But give me this mountain. I'm 85 years old now, but I'm just as strong now to fight and defeat them and to drive them out. Perhaps I can drive them out if you give me this mountain. And Joshua gave Caleb that mountain. Okay? And so the rest of chapter 15, you've got a lot of names in there, a lot of names, okay, but don't, as I said earlier, don't be afraid of the names, just pronounce them, take them syllable by syllable. For example, let's look at, starting with verse 25, and Hazor, Hadatah, and Kerioth, and Hezron, which is Hazor, Amam, and Shema, Shema, and Moladah, and Hazar Gada, and Heshmam, Mon and Beth Pele and Hazar Shual and Beersheba and Bizjaja, Baala and Aim and Azem. Okay, just take it syllable by syllable. No, I'm not trying to show off. I'm just showing you how you can flow, flow. You don't have to be afraid of these names. Verse 49 and 50 and Dana. And Kerjah Samna, which is Debir, and Anab, and Eshtemal, and Anim, 
51, and Goshen, and Holon, and Gila, 11 cities with their villages. These are important, ladies and gentlemen, that you read them so that you know that you know that these areas, these cities, these territories belonged and still belong to Israel. God gave these lands to Israel, and Joshua distributed those lands. Chapter 16, and the lot of the children of Joseph fell from Jordan by Jericho unto the water of Jericho on the east, to the wilderness that goeth up from Jericho throughout Mount Bethel. So we're looking in chapter 16 at uh, Manasseh and Ephraim's inheritance. Chapter 17, we're looking at Manasseh's inheritance. <coughs> chapter 18, we're looking at Claiming the land, chapter 18, and the whole congregation of the children of Israel assembled together at Shiloh. Shiloh was where they built, they erected the tabernacle, and set up the tabernacle of the congregation there, and the land was subdued before them. And there remained among the children of Israel seven tribes which had not yet received their inheritance. So that by the time they set up <coughs> the tabernacle, at Shiloh, there were still seven tribes that had not yet received their inheritance. And Joshua said unto the children of Israel, How long are ye slack to go to possess the land which the Lord God of your fathers have given you? So you can visualize the tribes of Israel gathered in their particular locations around the tabernacle in Shiloh when they should have been moving out tribe by tribe and possessing their land. And so Joshua even had to urge some of the tribes, go out and fight for your land. Yes, you're going to have to fight and, uh, and go out and fight for your land. Uh, these people are not going to give their lands up, so you go out and these, this is your possession, and so you go out and fight for this land. Occupy, occupy this land. Chapter 19, we see Simeon's inheritance. Chapter, we also see Issachar's inheritance and Naphtali's inheritance. Chapter 20, we see cities of refuge. The Lord also spake unto Joshua, chapter 20, verse 1, Speak to the children of Israel, saying, Appoint out for you cities of refuge, whereof I spake unto you by the hand of Moses. Now, this is the importance of the cities of refuge, ladies and gentlemen, that the slayer that killeth any person unawares and unwittingly may flee thither, and they shall be your refuge from the avenger of blood. If a person accidentally kills somebody, not a murder, a murder is a planned uh, killing. If a person accidentally kills someone, then that person could flee to one of the cities of refuge. And uh, upon arriving at the city, that person would cry out upon the entrance of, of that city, cry out the, his case against, uh, the case that's against him, and declare his innocence, and declare that he killed someone by accident. And then that person was given refuge in that city, until the, the um, officials of the city could investigate his case, because if he didn't do that, then the avenger of blood, verse 3, the avenger of blood, in other words, uh, one of the, uh, person, uh, the relatives of the person who was killed, the avenger of blood, a family member, a hitman or a hired hitman, could come and kill that person. So the cities of refuge had very important places. In, in the lives of the people. Verse 8, And on the other side, Jordan by Jericho, eastward they assigned Bezer in the wilderness upon the plain out of the tribe of Reuben, and Ramoth in Gilead out of the tribe of Gad, and Golan in Bashan out of the tribe of Manasseh. These were the cities appointed for all the children of Israel and for the stranger that sojourneth among them that whosoever killeth any person at unawares might flee thither 
and not die by the hand of the avenger of blood until he stood before the congregation. Okay, chapter 21, cities for the priest. The priest had their own cities. You see, the Levites did not receive any lands to uh, call their own, uh, but they did get certain cities, and the suburbs of those cities were land for the priest to raise their cattle, and um, so uh, God made sure that the priests had plenty of room, plenty of space to uh, raise their cattle, their sheep, their oxen, and um, have space to um, to gather what was needed in their pursuit of uh, maintaining the tabernacle later on the temple. Okay, the priest's job was to minister unto God in the tabernacle. They had to sacrifice animals. They had certain responsibilities. And so they were given cities according to chapter 21. Moving on to chapter 22, uh, Joshua's blessing. And then I already explained about the altar that was built by the tribe of Gad, uh, Manasseh, and, and Reuben um, to uh, commemorate their crossing the Jordan. Okay, but that situation, if that situation had not been handled very carefully by Phineas, there would have been a lot of bloodshed because most of Israel thought that these tribes were trying to set up their own worship, which would violate the laws God gave to Moses. And But that thing worked out very well. Okay, and it and, and also lets us know that we can reason together. We can reason with one another. If our hearts are right and really people want to reason together, people can reason together. People don't have to hate on one another. One another. We can reason together and come together in love. Chapter 22. And then Joshua called the Reubenites and the Gadites and the half-tribe of Manasseh and said unto them, you have kept all that Moses, the servant of the Lord, commanded you, and have obeyed my voice in all that I commanded you. You have not left your brethren these many days unto this day, but have kept the charge of the commandment of the Lord your God. And now the Lord your God hath given rest unto your brethren, as he promised them. Therefore now return ye, and get ye unto your tents, and unto the land of your possession, which Moses, the servant of the Lord, gave you, on the other side of Jordan. So this is a call by Joshua to release Gad and Manasseh and Reuben to go back to the other side of the Jordan where uh, they would build their cities and, 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 and uh, take care of their families and loved ones. But in verse 5, listen to this, but take diligent heed to do the commandment and the law which Moses, the servant of the Lord, charged you to love the Lord your God and to walk in all his ways and to keep his commandments and to cleave unto him and to serve him with all your heart and with all your soul. So Joshua blessed them and sent them away and they went unto their tents. So Joshua released Gad and Reuben and Manasseh to go back across the Jordan to uh, be with their families and, and to raise up their cities there but he warned them, make sure you love the Lord your God and obey him and do his commandments. Okay, chapter 23, the people assembled. And it came to pass a long time after that the Lord had given rest unto Israel from all their enemies round about, that Joshua, Joshua waxed old and stricken in age, and Joshua called for all Israel and for their elders and for their heads and for their judges and for their officers and said unto them, I am old and stricken in age. And yet, and ye have seen all that the Lord your God hath done unto all these nations because of you. For the Lord your God is he that hath fought for you. Behold, I have divided unto you by lot these nations that remain to be an inheritance for your tribes from Jordan with all the nations that I've cut off even unto the great sea westward. That means from all the way from Jordan all the way down to the Mediterranean Sea 
all that land, ladies and gentlemen, all that land that is occupied by other nations today, that land belongs to Israel. Be therefore very courageous to keep and do all that is written in the book of the law of Moses, that ye turn not aside therefrom to the right hand or to the left, that ye come not among these nations, these that remain among you, neither make mention of the names of their gods, nor cause to swear by them, neither serve them nor bow yourselves to them, but cleave unto the Lord your God as ye have done unto this day. This is the powerful charge that uh, Joshua gave to the children of Israel. For the Lord hath driven out from before you great nations and strong, but as for you, no man hath been able to stand before you unto this day. One man of you shall chase a thousand for the Lord your God. He it is that fighteth for you as he hath promised. Take good heed therefore unto yourselves that ye love the Lord your your God. Ladies and gentlemen, when we love the Lord God with all our heart and obey him, it is no secret what God can do uh, for us. Verse 16, when ye have transgressed the covenant of the Lord your God, which he commanded you, and have gone and served other gods and bowed yourselves to them, then shall the anger of the Lord be kindled against you. And ye shall perish quickly from off the good land which he hath given unto you. Joshua gave that warning, and it is a warning, that if we disobey God, then uh, uh, we will perish quickly. And so Joshua gave the command, and this is his, his final address. Uh, Joshua's final address. We call this the farewell address. You can uh, compare this with Moses' farewell address at the end of Deuteronomy where um, Joshua gives his final address to the people. And um, somewhere, I think, in your homework for uh, next week, you're going to be asked when you venture into the book of Judges uh, who finished writing the book of Joshua because Joshua could not have written about his own death. Okay, same as Moses. Moses did not write about his death in the last chapter of Deuteronomy. Chapter 24, we're looking at Joshua's address, God's acts reviewed. They gave, he gave a history of God's um, uh, great works, then the death of Joshua, and then the memorial for Joseph's bones. They had Joseph's bones all the time. Ever since they came out of Egypt, they had the bones of Joseph. And after the death of Joshua, ladies and gentlemen, they buried the bones of Joseph in Canaan land. And Joshua gathered all the tribes of Israel to Shechem and called for the elders of Israel and for their heads, for their judges, for their officials, and they presented themselves before the Lord. And Joshua said unto all the people, Thus saith the Lord God of Israel, Your fathers dwelt on the other side of the flood in old time, even Terah, the father of Abraham, and the father of Nacor, and they served other gods. And I took your father, Abraham, from the other side of the flood and led him throughout all the land of Canaan and multiplied his seed and gave him Isaac. This is God speaking through Joshua. And I gave Isaac, Jacob, and Esau. And I gave unto Esau Mount Seir to possess it. But Jacob and his children went down into Egypt. I sent Moses also and Aaron, and I plagued Egypt according to that which I did among them, and afterward I brought you out. And I brought your fathers out of Egypt, and ye came unto the sea, and the Egyptians pursued after your fathers with chariots and horsemen unto the Red Sea. And when they cried unto the Lord, he put darkness between you and the Egyptians, and brought the sea upon them, and covered them, and your eyes have seen what I have done in Egypt." And ye dwelt in the wilderness a long season. And I brought you into the land of the Amorites, which dwelt on the other side, Jordan. And they fought with you. And I gave them into your hand, and ye, that ye might possess their land. And I destroyed them from before you. Then Balak, the son of Zippor, king of Moab, arose and warred against Israel, and sent 
and called Balaam, the son of Beor, to curse you. But I would not hearken unto Balaam. Therefore he blessed you still, so I delivered you out of his hand. And ye went over Jordan, and came unto Jericho, and the men of Jericho fought against you, the Amorites, and the Perizzites, and the Canaanites, and the Hittites, and the Girgashites, and the Hivites, and the Jebusites, and I deliver them into your hand. And I sent the, the hornet before you, which drove them out from before you, even the two kings of the Amorites, but not with thy sword, nor with thy bow. And I have given you a land for which ye did not labor, and cities which ye built not, and ye dwell in them, of the vineyards and the olive yards, which ye planted not do ye eat. Now therefore, verse 14, fear the Lord. Joshua gives a history of what God had done for the people. Verse 14, Now therefore fear the Lord, and serve him in sincerity and in truth, and put away the gods which your fathers served on the other side of the flood, and in Egypt, and serve ye the Lord. Listen to this, ladies and gentlemen. Verse 15, And if it seem evil unto you to serve the Lord, choose you this day whom ye will serve whether the gods which your fathers served that were on the other side of the flood or the gods of the Amorites in whose land ye dwell, ye dwell, but as for me and my house, what a declaration, but as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. I think the, the, one of the most important verses in Joshua is 15.24, 24.15. And if it seem evil unto you, to serve the Lord, choose you this day whom ye will serve, whether the gods which your fathers served that were on the other side of the flood, or the gods of the Amorites in whose land ye dwell. But as for me and my house, Joshua said, we will serve the Lord. And listen to what Israel said, verse 16. And the people answered and said, God forbid that we should forsake the Lord to serve other gods. For the Lord our God, he it is that brought us up and our fathers out of the land of Egypt. From the house of bondage in which did the, those great signs in our sight and preserved us in all the way wherein we went and among all the people through whom we passed. And so the people promised they would serve the Lord. Verse 20, if you forsake the Lord and serve strange gods, then he will turn and do you hurt and consume you. After that, he had done you good. And the people said unto Joshua, verse 21, Nay, but we will serve the Lord. Verse 22, And Joshua said unto the people, Ye are witnesses against yourselves that ye have chosen you the Lord to serve him. And they said, We are witnesses. Powerful. The people responded, We will serve the Lord. Verse 26, And Joshua wrote these words in the book of the law of God and took a great stone and set it up there under an oak and was by the sanctuary of the Lord. He said, This stone will be a witness. And Israel, verse 31, Served the Lord all the days of Joshua and all the days of the elders that outlived Joshua and which had known all the works of the Lord that he had done for Israel. And verse 32, And the bones of Joseph which the children of Israel brought up out of Egypt, buried they in Shechem in a parcel of ground which Jacob bought of the sons of Hamor, the father of Shechem, for a hundred pieces of silver, and it became the inheritance of the children of Joseph. And Eleazar, the son of Aaron, died, and they buried him in a hill that pertained to Phinehas, his son, which was given him in Mount Ephraim. And so Eleazar, the son of Aaron, died, and Phinehas became the high priest. What a powerful history, review of history, and um, what a mighty book, this book of Joshua. Uh, we've covered the 24 chapters of Joshua, and um, next week, your assignment, uh, we're going to look at um, the book of Judges, uh, we're going to take half of the book of Judges and look and see um, what takes place in the history of God's people. 
Ladies and gentlemen, you can't beat this book. You can't beat the Bible. You can't. The Bible is uh, written by God, written by the Holy Spirit. It's profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, and for instruction in righteousness. Get in the book. Stay in the book. Read the Bible. Read it to your children. Read it to your family. Share it with others. This is the book, ladies and gentlemen. This is the book where God reveals his love to us all. And, 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 and this book shows us how to get from earth to glory. Okay, and it's the revelation of God's love for us through his son, Jesus Christ. Salvation is in this book. The way of life is in this book. And we praise God. Father God, we want to thank you for this lesson tonight. Thank you, Lord, for uh, the power, power of your word. Thank you for the history in your word. Thank you for the teaching and, and, and the anointing upon your word. And, Lord, we ask that you bless each family, each individual. Bless and keep each and every one, Lord. And we thank you in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen, amen, amen. Praise God. We're going to ask uh, Dr. Jean Bratton if she has any comments. Um, then we're going to uh, go and ask Dustina if she's identified anything we need to attend to. I I enjoyed everything, um, Apostle Carter. Um, Bless you. It, it's always so good to... You know, sit in and, and be fed. I mean, even pastors need to be fed, you know. So this was very, very good. Thank you so much for, you know, doing this and, and making it so convenient for everyone. Thank you. Praise God. God bless you. That's Dr. Jean Bratton, ladies and gentlemen. If you ever get to Wilmington, Delaware, you can't go through Delaware without meeting Dr. Jean Bratton, the pastor <coughs> of Living Waters Fellowship. And uh, we've been partners in the ministry for a number of years, praise God. And um, she'll be a blessing to you all uh, if you take the time and go and visit with her and her fellowship. Praise God. Let's go to Dustina. Dustina, I'd like to thank you again for taking the chat window for us and, and ministering in the chat window. And I've got great confidence in God using Dustina and uh, how she can handle your questions and comments. And Dustina, is there anything that needs our attention? No, sir. Um, I was pretty much just kind of bouncing off of you of the scriptures you were going over and just kind of commenting and kind of adding my own little commentary to it. So, no, nobody's really responded or said anything except for some amens at the end with the prayer. So, we're all good. Hey, the amens are good, aren't they? Amen. <laughs> <laughs> the, la the last comment I made was just, talking about Joshua 24 you know it's amazing how he showed his display and his spiritual leadership and commitment to God even at the end of his life and oh, it's wow. just yes. it's a powerful book I mean he he stayed faithful from the beginning to the end and we could all learn something from Joshua you know and our walk with the Lord and how we're to demonstrate our love and our faithfulness and commitment to God on our daily work on our daily walks as well. So it, it's a powerful book. I love Joshua. So Praise God. Praise God. And you know, another thing, Dustin, thank you for your comments and your insights. Another thing about Joshua, Joshua stayed in his place, didn't he? Amen. He sure did. And he, he, never, tried to, he never tried to go before Moses. He always, he stayed right there with him. He never tried to take over, even from the beginning. And it, it's amazing the commitment that he had through this and then how he took control when the Lord anointed him and the wisdom that that man had in his leadership. It's just, it's phenomenal. And, and that's something that we can all strive to pray for is that great wisdom. If That's one of the biggest things I pray for daily from the time I wake up, from the time I go to bed, is to have wisdom and discernment with my walk with the Lord or anything that I encounter through that day. And we should all do that. Praise so God. So I praise, praise God. God. Praise God. I love it. Thank you so much, Dustina, for sharing that. You can, okay. Joshua stayed in his lane. He stayed mm -hmm. in his lane. He didn't cross over. 
Mm-hmm. And, and, and he, he never tried it. to go ahead of God. No, no. And and he stayed under authority. So mm-hmm. many Christians, I mean, uh, 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 don't want to walk in authority. I've I've seen a lot of believers uh, get promotion, and then uh, you promote them. And God used you to promote somebody in the ministry. Next thing you know, they're talking about you. They don't need you any any longer. That's the worst mm-hmm. thing to do. Um, Joshua stayed yeah, in his lane, and and Caleb stayed in his lane, and they gave honor to Moses. And Joshua was uh, 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 an apprentice for forty years, ladies and gentlemen. Mm-hmm. Forty years he served as, as an associate minister. To Moses, waiting his time, and God, God rewards us when we wait on Him, and yes. wait on His timing. So, thank you, Dustina. Thank you, Doctor Bratton. Anyone else no have problem. any questions? Any comments? We'd surely be glad to entertain your questions and comments. We've got a couple more minutes. Okay, okay. Uh, if if you all are like me, you're hungry. Let me go get something to eat. Okay, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and Dr. Jean Bratton's going to bed. She got to get up three o'clock or four o'clock in the morning to go to work. So I know where she's going. Okay. Uh, <laughs> good night, Dr. Jean. Good night. Close us out in prayer before you go, please. Father God. We thank you for this Bible study. We thank you for Apostle Carter and Jackie, Father God, for, Father God, just feeding your saints spiritual food. So, Father God, as we close this Bible study, we ask that you bless everyone who has logged in and participated, Father God, and bless Apostle Carter and Jackie's work, Father God. And we just ask, Father God, that you give them every resource and fulfill their every need so that this Bible study will grow. And, Lord, we just thank you, and we give you all the glory, honor, and praise in Christ Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Praise God. Praise God. You all read our chapters 1 through 12 of Judges for next week, and we look forward to seeing you at that time. Lord bless you and keep you. Uh, uh, on behalf of Jackie Carter, uh, we love you all and uh, stand with you. Have a good night, everybody. You too. Bye-bye. Good night, Dr. Carter. Good night. Mm-hmm.